All right, what's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in. Um, first of all, I just want to thank my friend Juan for helping me get into Gold's Gym. I don't have any gym passes, so uh, thanks to you, bro, for that. And uh, so in this video, we're going to do things a little differently. Just pretty much going to show you guys the workout and then uh, give you guys a few tips on each of the movements that I did. So started off with deads, hit 395 for some sets of four. And uh, this was the first set right here. As you guys are going to see, the last rep of the set was like really slow and stuff. And pretty much what I was doing wrong was I was just jerking on the bar too much. So uh, for the second and third set, what I worked on was pulling out the slack from the bar first and getting tighter before each pull. So not jerking on the bar, but slowly and progressively adding force as I'm pulling on the bar. And that made the reps a lot smoother, made the form a lot more consistent and just overall made the technique a lot better. And as you guys saw, uh, that set moved a lot better. Next, we moved on to hamstring curl. All right, guys. So to properly engage your hamstrings, you want to do two things. So first, you want to dorsiflex at the ankle, which looks like this. And secondly, you want to extend at the hip. So full hip extension and dorsiflexion. So the reasons you want to do these things are when you dorsiflex, you disengage the calf. And basically, the calf's second function is to bend the knee, flex the knee. So by disengaging the calf, you're eliminating that from the movement so you can more directly target the hamstrings. Second, for hip extension, you want to do this because the hamstring secondary function is to extend at the hip. The first function, as we know, is to bend at the knee or flex at the knee, right? So by extending at the hip as well, you're getting the hamstring to work both of its functions so you get more activation. Alright guys, so since I was at the gym, I took advantage of uh, the equipment around me and just played around with some accessory movements. Like I've said before, you don't need a bunch of accessory movements. I literally just did like one for each uh, muscle group that I was hitting and uh, just mostly for fun, not because I need it, you know? And uh, just for a change of pace since I never get the chance to play with these things. But So over here we have the high row. And this one's actually an interesting one. Uh, it hits a certain area of the trap and rhomboid that's like, I believe around T3 and T4. And I didn't learn about this until I watched Alberto Nunez uh, do this and explain about it. But yeah, it's not so much a lat movement as it is for that certain area. And the way you go about this guys is to uh, retract your scapula and depress your scapula as you're pulling. And you don't need to fully extend your arm at the top, but try to protract your scapula at the top. That way you get a full stretch of that uh, rhomboid trap area and then retract and depress when you're pulling back. All right, next up we had some bicep curls and uh, I know I don't look like much guys and it's uh, cause I haven't trained arms in a few years but this year that's gonna change, right? I've actually been hitting uh, my arms like once a week since the new year started but yeah, I didn't train arms for a while just cause I stopped caring and just didn't really enjoy it but we're gonna bring those arms up this year guys cause big arms are the secret to a big bench. Not really but they do help a bit, right? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I'll show you guys an image of what my arms used to look like when I did train for hypertrophy and stuff. Just so you guys trust me and uh, trust that I do know a thing or two about training arms. So I only ever did one movement for biceps guys, which was this, uh, the alternating dumbbell curl. And the key to this guys is to supinate at the wrist, which means to turn your palm to face upward as you curl. So the reason you want to do this is because supination is the second function of the bicep. The first one obviously being to bend the arm, flex the arm. So by supinating as you curl, you're performing both functions of the bicep, which allow for more bicep activation and engagement. All right guys, so we finished up with some rope pushdowns and the tip I can give you guys for this one is to allow your humerus, which is your upper arm, to flow with the movement. So when you're letting the rope go up, allow your humerus to travel up with it. And then when you're pulling the rope down, allow your humerus to travel down with it. And this is because the second function of the tricep, first one obviously being arm extension, is shoulder extension. So by allowing your humerus to travel in this way, you're performing both functions of the tricep, which leads to greater activation and engagement. Just like when you guys extend at the hip for the hamstring curl and when you supinate at the arm for the bicep curl, like I told you guys earlier. All right, so that's it for this one, guys. I uh, hope you guys found the tips useful. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.